Right, um, tonight I'm just going to do some training. Uh, I'm not going to go into an actual gameplay as such. Um, I was playing this this game, Star Trek. Um, if I, if, first of all, if you are watching, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Hope you had a really good day so far. You've been busy, you know, busy and beavering away at work or whatever, but you've had a really good day. Um, but yeah, I've been playing um, Star Trek Bridge Crew lately. Um, last, last yesterday. I was got to play it with some um, other players which is quite cool and it definitely made a big difference in the game I also have my brother come over one second um, sorry about that it was just loading I also have my brother come over who um, was having a bit of a bash himself and as he was playing the game um, I learned a few things about the playability of the of the game so I thought it was worth just coming back to um, coming back to this and actually doing some training so learning how all the different roles are so I'm only going to stream for that once that's once I've completed that part then I'm going to come off stream but it's just a really a very 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 short stream just showing the um, basically the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here if I, let me take a picture of that there we go um, just a very short stream of just really showing all the different commands and how it, how it works and how it plays um, which is really really you know just an amazing game I just thought it'd be really worth just you know just um, just getting an idea really of of how the controls work because the more you learn the control do the training and you learn the controls the better your experience will be and I've learned some things about particularly the captain's chair so without going too far on it let's get it going <clears throat> and start there we go I might even do a training on the Star Trek one the Enterprise Okay, so we're in the training Welcome center. to the Starfleet Training Simulator. Our system is currently configured to train command crew of Aegis-class starships. Here you may learn about the roles and responsibilities of each officer on the bridge, and how to operate all of the controls of their command stations. Feel free to experiment and get comfortable with the ship here in the simulator before moving on to the real thing. Okay, so this is basically... As you can probably tell, it's a hollow deck, a uh, very modern-looking hollow deck. This is my outfit, captain's chair. We've got um, the helm control. We've got um, tactical, and we've got engineering. I'm going to take the captain for the moment, and then I'll work for each different bit as we go along. So I've got all my control panels here, and use the uh, control, the directional joysticks, to move it back and forth and then you have to press the trigger button to actually select it it's not the because normally you would click the X button to, to select it but on this one you have to press the trigger button so the left trigger button is for the right arm, left arm right trigger button naturally for the right arm so let's As choose captain, captain you are in overall command of the crew it is your responsibility to communicate with and to coordinate the actions of the other officers on the bridge you'll receive important updates on mission status and also have direct control of the main view screen. Okay. So, so that's basically a brief introduction. So I've got this little menu screen. Now, one thing I learned from my brother is during the actual gameplay, there is this screen here. So this screen I'm looking at right now does actually appear as well as when I'm looking at the different crew members. So we'll start with the objectives. Captain's objectives feed contains vital information about your ship's mission. Updates from support crew and Starfleet command are reflected here so that you will always know what your crew needs to accomplish. Open the objectives feed now. Okay, so, um, yeah, so there is one little thing you can do, which is you can do a little overlay, and this helps you to know all the buttons as well before you get onto it. But um, we'll carry on as it goes. So let's Some select it. Some objectives also have more detailed information. 
Sometimes you, as captain, must choose between different ways to complete an objective and direct your crew accordingly. In all cases, your crew depends on you to keep them informed of their goals. Select the objective for more information. Okay. Sorry. Just cleaning my lens. One second. Sorry. Okay, right. So, uh, so let's choose the objective. Sometimes if you got Luke, you will receive additional information to help with your mission. Keep an eye out for your intel feed, located near your objective readout for tips and hints. Okay, if you've got move controls, you tend to have a bit more um, uh, maneuverability and your arms go really weird, but you c it still works with the um, dual shock. Okay, so the next thing is hail. As captain, you can answer a hail when messages from Starfleet or other ships are received. If the message is accompanied by video, it will be displayed on the main view screen. Answer the incoming hail now. Okay, so this little orange button here. This is Captain Uku of USS Hakali. Uku. Our system checks are complete. We're ready to go. We'll stand by and follow you out when you're ready. Okay. All right, so next up we'll go external view. At any time while on the bridge, you can use an external view to see what is going on outside and around the ship. Hold the external view button now. This is really nice. Watch this. Okay, so I'm literally standing on the top of the ship and I can see all of the space around me, including, I guess that's Earth and the ship there. And a uh, little fun little thing I like doing is doing uh, saucer surfing. Got to try that out. Okay, so let's go to the next bit. So, ship status. As captain, you can access basic information about your ship status. Open your status displays now. Okay, so status is that one. The status information available to you is helpful, but no substitute for the more detailed knowledge of your chief engineer. Okay. Right, so... As map. captain, you have the same maps at your fingertips as your helm and tactical officers. You may use these to aid communication, to identify a target for tactical, or to specify a destination for helm. Targets and nearby destinations are selected from the local map, which shows objects of interest around you. Open the local map view. Okay, so hit local map view is on the left. Now touch any object on the map to select it as your target. Okay, so there's two objects there. There's obviously my ship, but there's a little red... I don't know if you can see it. There's a little red dot just there. Some so orders you give to the crew require you to first designate a target or destination, exactly as you just did. You've got this little thing as well, so you can... I don't quite know the function of this, really, but that's a little <laughs> added touch. Okay, so... When playing alone or with AI members of the command crew, the captain gives orders to the AI officers. To give an order to a specific officer, look at them and use the orders system to select from the available commands. Remember, some commands will first require that you select a target or destination. Try ordering your chief engineer to prioritize power to engines. Some orders apply to the entire crew. To access these orders, look towards the central console in front of you. First, select the closest ship from your local map. Then try ordering the crew to investigate it. Okay, so look at engineering, which I'm doing. All right, so basically this button down here, I don't know if you can see it, it's basically, I don't know why it's flipped over. It should be better if it's the other way around. But basically the X button is the one to check the order. So she's now highlighted. And you've got all these different options here. So you've got power uh, phasers, power shields, balanced power. So this is the one we want. Prioritizing power to engines. Okay. Okay. So I need to select a target. Okay. This is the menu screen I didn't know about. So analyze. With updating target. Scan initiated. Okay. And then wait, wait for it to finish. I finished the scan. 
Okay. And engage. Doesn't blow up though. <laughs> For some reason it doesn't blow up on this one. Okay. Impulse engines allow the ship to rapidly traverse great distances within a star system. When playing with an AI crew, you will need to choose a destination and give the orders to prepare for <coughs> and initiate impulse travel. First, choose a destination from your impulse map. Okay, so impulse map is on my left. You need to select a destination from the impulse map. And we've got this little menu screen here with um, Alpha Prime, which is about the first destination. I guess Moon. Or now give the order to prepare for impulse. Your chief engineer will give more power to the engines, and your helmsman will lay in a course and align the ship. Okay, I think I'm realising now that that symbol there means that's me. So it says I'm by the moon, and that's where I'm going. So I just realised that that is just showing where I'm at. I'm at. Tell the crew to engage impulse flight. Plotting impulse course. This is good. See, I didn't know about this middle this middle screen. That's what I was trying to learn. See, now I can command from here instead of jumping from person to person to person, which is what I was doing New earlier. Course laid in, Captain. Okay, so all I do now is aye, aye, Captain. engage, and off we go. And saucer surfing. This is what I was saying. Source surfing, so you can go at speed, see what's around. Okay. Okay, right, so... The ship's warp drive can generate a warp field, distorting space around the Aegis, and allowing you to travel to other star systems much faster than the speed of light. When playing with an AI crew, the captain chooses a destination and gives the orders to prepare for and initiate warp travel. Always bear in mind that charging the warp coils consumes most of the ship's power. The Aegis will not be able to maintain a full combat stance during these critical seconds. To go to warp, first choose a destination from your warp map. Okay, so choose a warp map. Oop. You need to select a destination from the warp map. So that's where we are, because that's where our symbol is, so it must be beta. Now give the order to prepare for warp. Your chief engineer will direct power to the warp coils, and your helmsman will lay in a course and align the ship to the correct heading. Aye, understood. Preparing for okay. warp oil. Adjusting power. Now tell your crew to engage the warp drive. Right, so let's wait for it to alight. We're ready to go. Aye. And here we go. Boom. Okay, new location. Okay, right. So, what's next? So, view Captains screen. Captains have control of the main view screen. You may choose to display any of several different overlays on the view screen with information about your ship's system status. Try the different views and overlays available. Open your view screen controls now. Okay, so view screen the is here. and magnify views only work when you are targeting another ship or object. Magnify provides an up-close view of your selected target. Target view provides enhanced situational awareness, showing both your own ship and your target at once. Okay, now before I do anything on here, I'm going to do this navigation thing because it gives you the speed and heading on the screen, which I kind of like that as a nice little touch. So we'll start with the Aegis exterior so you can see what the ship looks like from um, outside. Target. And then magnify. And there's, there's our, um, our, our spacecraft that we're looking at. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Sometimes, as captain, you may wish to take temporary control over another command station. This allows you to perform any of the functions of that role, then return to the captain's chair when ready. You cannot, however, take control of a station currently being operated by another player. To take control of another station, look at any of your AI command crew and activate orders mode. 
Now choose the Take Over option. You can return to the captain's chair at any time by tapping the Orders Mode button again. So we'll start with this guy. So, see, there's a the Take Over button just there. So, boom. Oh, wow, it's a black desk. The other one wasn't that way. Okay, so this is my little map. Just a few things here. I'm not. I say I'm not really sure what this benef what use this is. Um, this is quite handy because this te tells the shows me the direction. And if I engage the uh, outside, you can see it a bit clearer where you're flying, which I find is quite handy. Okay. This one here is the speed engine, and then you've got your map there. Impulse screen. Calculating travel vector. And this thick yellow thing here helps me to sort of align myself before I can zoom off. So let's shift him round. This can take some time to turn. See, that's where I was sitting. Okay. Oh. And then, boom. Okay. Let's see where we are now. Okay. Right, let's go back to the captain's chair. Okay. Okay, so next one. In emergency situations, you can sound a red alert to notify your ship's crew. If you are playing with an AI as tactical officer, she will interpret a red alert as a request to prepare for combat. Try activating red alert now. Aye, aye. Shields raised. Army torpedoes. Oops. Okay. Eat that button is very easy to push every time. And help overlay, which we've sort of covered. And that basically shows all the different bits. Particularly good, I suppose, if you're just doing this for the first time. Uh, okay, so. Uh, that's it really on that one so quit that one topics so I need to change station menu right so we're gonna do helm now as helmsman you are the ship's navigator responsible for maneuvering the ship and navigating within and between star systems your crew depends on you to get the ship wherever needed to avoid collisions with hazards in space and to maneuver for tactical advantage in combat situations. Okay, so we'll do the same stuff we did before. Your local map can be used to mark ships and objects as waypoints, to check your proximity to hazards, and gauge when you are close to being detected by hostiles. Touch any target on the map to select it. Okay, so... Maneuvering. Basic maneuvering controls allow you to give the ship forward or reverse thrust, to steer the ship to port or starboard, and to move the ship up or down on its vertical axis. The amount of thrust you can give depends on the amount of power your chief engineer allocates to engines. The more power your engines have, the more responsive the ship will be. Maneuvering controls are only available when your local map view is active. The throttle controls your speed and also allows you to reverse or make a full stop. Let's go full. Full level. Okay. So Your ship's impulse. impulse drive allows you to travel quickly between planets and other points of interest within a star system. To travel via impulse, you will first need to plot a course by choosing a destination on the impulse map. Once the course is plotted, you will then need to align your ship with the appropriate heading engage the impulse drive. 
Be aware, the impulse drive cannot be engaged unless the chief engineer has allocated sufficient power. Select any point of interest in the star system to plot a course to that destination. Okay. So now return to the local zone. view and steer the ship to line up with your plotted course. Nearly there. Grab and push your throttle to engage the impulse drive. The ship's computer oh. will automatically follow the course you plotted. Hold on. For some reason, he's gone the wrong way. There we go. This does work very much like a ship. So you have to remember to keep, you know, change the steering every so often. Okay, so this is the throttle, and here we go. Okay. So, warp travel. The ship's warp drive can distort space around the ship to propel it faster than light across the vast distances between star systems. The tremendous amount of energy needed for warp travel will require you to coordinate closely with the chief engineer. To travel by warp, it is your responsibility to plot a course by selecting a star system on your warp map. When the course is plotted, you will need to align the ship with the proper heading. Before you can enter warp, your chief engineer will have to prepare the ship and charge the warp coils. Select a star system to plot a course to it. Now return to the local view and steer the ship to line up with your plotted course. So again, move the ship. Warp coils charged. Push your throttle to engage the warp drive. The warp coils can only remain charged for a little time. The chief engineer will need to prepare the ship for warp ship. Sorry, I cut him off there. Sorry. Now this is an interesting one. ship signature. I'm not quite sure what that is exactly. But Various systems of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's sensors. As helmsman, the more thrust you are using, the farther away the Aegis can be detected. On your local map, you'll see a ring that expands and contracts as the ship's signature increases or decreases. Ah. When other ships come within that ring, they will detect the Aegis. I'm with it now. Right, okay, so... So this is basically showing, right, where the, um... Where you're detectable. Okay, um... Okay, right. Okay, so that's that one. So, station menu again. Oh, what's up there? There we go. Right, so... Tactical this time. As the tactical officer, you are in charge of the ship's weapons, defences and scanners. In combat situations, you must coordinate with the rest of the bridge crew to protect the ship and deal with any threats to it. But you also have a crucial role in non-combat situations. It is the tactical officer's responsibility to scan nearby ships and other objects in the environment to reveal vital information about them. Okay. So selecting in order the target. to scan anything or to fire on it, you must first target it. To select a target, simply select the appropriate icon on your map. Once you've selected a target, a display will show all currently known information about your selection. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Okay, so there's the target. That looks like a Ferengi almost. Not too sure. Okay. You will often need to scan a target to learn more about it. 
or to locate people or objects of interest in another vessel. Some objects are scanned with a simple general scanning action. This happens automatically when the object is targeted. More complex objects, like other ships, can be scanned for specific properties, such as the locations of any weak points in a ship's system. When an object has many features to scan, scanning them all at once is much slower than scanning a single specific system. Hmm. Scanning is required before it's possible to transport people or cargo off of another vessel or before being able to target weak spots of an enemy's ship systems. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Okay. So Here you can select what systems you want to scan. Scanning a single system will always be faster than scanning multiple at once. Also, the closer the ship is to the okay. target, the faster you can scan. Scan the ship's engines now to reveal their status and any weak points which would allow you to damage the engines directly. That's interesting, I didn't know that. I've just been scanning the whole lot, but yeah. Excuse me one moment. Excuse me one moment. Someone's at my door. Let me just realign this. Uh, there we go. Right, sorry about that, guys. Um, just said that someone, someone just turned up at the door. So, um, oh, what's this? Ah, oh, right. That's interesting. Uh, there we go. Right. Yeah, just had a guest turn up at the door. So um, I'm just going to carry on. So we've got to the scanning, but I didn't know you can do individual scanning. So that's quite, quite clever. Okay, next bit is the shields. As tactical officer, you have control over raising and lowering the ship's shields. When raised, the shields will charge up to maximum strength over time. They are your best defense against damage to the ship. When shields are lowered or down to zero strength, any damage to the ship may cause serious harm to onboard systems or even loss of life to your crew. When shields are raised, the chief engineer can direct power to them to increase their effectiveness. Raise the shields now. There is a delay while power is channeled into the shield emitters before the shields come online. In a combat situation, remember that you need to raise shields before the enemy fires. Okay, right, so what's next? We've got... Oh, now we're getting into the good stuff, the meat. Photon torpedoes are a devastating weapon. They can automatically track a moving target and deliver heavy damage on impact. However, before you can fire them, you must first give the order to arm them. Arm your torpedoes now. Each torpedo tube takes time to load. Your supply of torpedoes for any mission is limited, so use them wisely. Target the nearby ship and fire torpedoes at it. Right, here we go. Waiting for them to load again. Be 
they do take a while. Keep firing until he blows up. That's if he blows it. It might be one of those games where it just keeps going on and on and on. Doesn't tell me whether I've, I've hit his engines or not. Alright, oh, okay, the shields... Oh, I see. The shields are down to zero and he's got 67% hull, so... I can see he still needs a bit more work. So, let's keep going until we get him. No target selected. Right, he's gone. Boom, done him. Okay, so the next one is obviously phases. phases are a versatile energy weapon they continually charge over time and when fully charged your phaser banks hold enough energy to fire multiple shots at your target phaser banks automatically track your target but only if it is within the indicated firing arc and within the current range of your weapons the effective range and damage of your phasers is controlled by the amount of energy the chief engineer allocates to them target the nearby ship and fire phasers at it Oh yeah, let's do this. Got him. I think. Well, 66 54%. 42%. 30. That should finish him off. Done. Nice. Nice, nice. Phasers can be used to precisely target weak spots of another vessel. To use this ability, you must first scan the desired subsystem of a target, such as its weapons or engines. Once scanned, you must then select that system. As long as a scanned system is selected, phasers will auto-target that system's weak points. To hit a subsystem, the target's shields must be down or inactive. Second, your ship must be correctly facing the targeted point. If the target shields are raised, or you are attacking from the wrong angle, firing in subsystem targeting mode will do minimal damage. When dealing with other ships, targeting individual systems is a good way to disable them or neutralize a threat without outright destroying the ship. This may sometimes be necessary to accomplish your mission objectives. Target the nearby ship and scan its weapons systems. Scan the ship's engines now to reveal their status and any weak points which would allow you to damage the engines directly. All right, I need to do all, all of them this time. Now select the ship's weapon systems to lock on to their weak points. Your ah. phasers are now in subsystem targeting mode. Fire them for a precision attack. Until Wicked. the target's shields are down. Oh, wow. Be able to hit the targeted system. For the charge a bit. Oh, 
Very good. Damage the targeted system. Excellent. Okay, right. So ship signature Various again. Systems of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's sensors. As tactical officer, arming torpedoes, firing weapons, and activating shields will each make the ship detectable from greater distances. To reduce the ship's signature, disarm torpedoes and lower shields now. All right, so what's next? Uh, system intrusion. The Aegis's prototype remote intrusion system can be used to send encoded signals and disrupt critical systems of other ships. Before it can be used, the tactical officer must scan the target. Once a scanned target is selected, an intrusion into its control systems is attempted via an automated routine. If successful, you may then choose to attempt any of the available disruption routines to temporarily cripple a specific system. Activate the remote intrusion system. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Let's see what this has got to say about itself. Select a scan target. Choose a disruption routine to inject into the target systems. Very good. But once used, the remote intrusion system will be fully occupied and unable to disrupt another target or system for some time. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh... Your ship is equipped with standard transporters for beaming objects or personnel aboard from other vessels or locations. Transporting first requires the tactical officer to scan the target vessel or location. If any mission critical items or personnel to transport, the target will appear on the transporter interface. It will take time to acquire a lock-on before you can beam, and you must remain in range for the lock to succeed. The transporter cannot penetrate through your ship's own shields or those of another ship, so you must coordinate with tactical to make sure your shields are down when you need to transport. If you are attempting to beam something from a hostile vessel, your crew will first have to disable its shields. Activate the transporter interface. Okay. So it's up Target here. Target a nearby ship by tapping its icon on the map. Scan. Well, I don't need engines, we just need life signs, so scan. Oh, no, I thought I turned off engines, never mind. Select the damaged ship from the list of targets. Lock on to the survivors aboard the ship to prepare for transport. To lock see. on, your ship must be in transport range and unshielded. The target shield, if any, must also be down. Okay, three people. Four. Five. You have transporter uh, lock on the survivors. Give the order to energize. The there survivors are now safely aboard the Aegis, but you can only transport six at a time. Any time there are more than six targets to transport from a single vessel, you will need to perform multiple transport cycles. Okay, let's do it. Can I do six at a time for some reason? It's a shame you can't do, you can't select more, but maybe on later games I can do more. Well, I suppose it make, makes sense because the transport normally only has about six spaces, doesn't it? Others are still awaiting transport. Okay, let's get the next six. While I'm doing that, let's get the next. Thingy that I can help over there, don't need to worry about that. Right, after this, we're going to finish off with the engineer. Now, the engineer here in console is a lot more complicated. Took me a while to get my head around it, so uh, that should be an interesting one. There are still others aboard. Yes, I know. I can see the duck. I can see it, alright? It's on my screen. I know how many. So stop being a Vulcan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my brother, by the way. 
Yeah. Oh, one, one of them anyway. Yeah, yeah the ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. Everyone is safely aboard. Thank you, I know. Shut up. Right, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, blue in Vulcans. Even though I'm one, but hey. As chief engineer, <laughs> you support all other members of the bridge crew by keeping the Aegis operating in top condition. You monitor vital status information about the ship's systems, allocate power needed for maneuvering and combat, and manage the ship's power grid to compensate for damage or boost its capabilities. You also manage the ship's repair teams and keep an eye on how visible the Aegis is to other ships in the area. Okay. Right, so we'll Your start with systems, systems display gives Play. vital information about the status of the ship's various systems at all times. When your ship is suffering from negative effects, this panel provides information about the source and severity of the effect. As chief engineer, you have more detail about your ship's status than any other member of the crew. Activate your systems display now. Okay. How you allocate power determines how effective each of those systems is. As situations change, you'll need to communicate with the rest of the crew to keep them supplied with power and to anticipate when to make critical adjustments. One of your most essential responsibilities as chief engineer is to distribute available power between each of the ship's major systems. Try giving maximum power to engines now. Now try giving maximum power to shields. You will have to reduce power to other systems first. Okay, right. Got that one down. Um. Before the ship can travel between star systems, you must make the ship ready and charge its warp coils. This draws a tremendous amount of power, and you will be unable to make any further changes to power allocation or routing while prepping for warp. Begin preparing for warp now. Okay, so turn on the warp. Charge the warp coils. The helmsman will have a limited time to engage the warp drive, or the coils will automatically discharge to prevent damage to the ship. Warp coils charged. You notice there's a little counter, so it's like 26 seconds, 25, 24. So basically the helm needs to basically engage the, engage the system to get going to where we need to go to. To eventually go off. Warp coil discharge imminent. Warp coil okay. discharged. Right, so what's the next one? So, repair system. This is quite handy, because obviously in battle you're going to get damaged, you're going to get hit, and all the rest of it. So this is quite a handy when one. When the ship sustains damage, it's <laughs> up to you to deploy repair crews and get critical systems back in working order. You have a limited number of crews available. You may send multiple crews to repair a single system faster, or you may spread them out to work on multiple systems at once. Activate your repair controls now. We have simulated damage to your phaser banks and scanners. Okay, Assign so repair good. crews to both systems to get them back to full working condition. Uh, anywhere else? Okay, now you can see, if you look, 9 seconds, 13 seconds, so it start, they are working busy. But you can, I believe, add an extra person. Do it faster. Phaser array restored. Perfect. Okay, right, so let's start with it. So, rerouting. Now, this is where it gets really complicated. It's possible to increase the power to one or more systems beyond normal safe operating limits by rerouting the ship's power grid. Switch to rerouting mode now. Try diverting extra power to shields by dragging an adjacent power node over to it. You have increased maximum shield strength by drawing some power from other systems. This situation is risky, though. The extra power flowing through those conduits could cause internal damage. When you use the rerouting system, you must keep an eye on the power grid and be ready to make changes as needed. So I should have done that one already. Alright, so 
Again, six things. The systems of the ship affect how easily other vessels can detect the Aegis. The Aegis is designed to avoid detection at ranges where other Federation vessels would be easily visible to another ship's sensors. As chief engineer, you can monitor all systems which are affecting the ship's signature and gauge the range at which the Aegis will be detectable to other vessels. This information is vital when trying to avoid contact with hostile ships. Okay, that's not complicated at all. Okay, and I think that pretty much covers it. All right, so let me go back to my captain's chair. So, oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, sorry, I've, oh yeah, stop. There we go, station menu. All right, um, well that's pretty much it. So basically, I've just run through all the different sections of this, uh, captain's chair and everything else just to get an idea of how, how it runs. The one thing that I, I've learned from the few times I've played this game is the key thing is, is understanding what, whatever position you're in, what you need to do to make sure that your team teammates, um, to help your teammates to, to action their request. For example, the engineer needs to make sure there's power in the engines before he can f go forwards. Likewise for the tactical and, and sending off the ships. When you hit a, you know, another one person has to scan, uh, scan an object or select a target before we can actually make any kind of action. And the captain has all the information in terms of all the objectives and things like that. So, so it is. This game is brilliant for um, team effort game, team coordination, because that's how you're going to succeed. If everybody's doing their own little thing, it's not going to work. You have to work as a cohesive unit. And I've, so far, I've really, really enjoyed this game. Playing this game, it's just brilliant. Looking forward to carrying on. Um, and I'm particularly looking forward to really, once I get really comfortable with it, is to going on back onto the Enterprise and seeing how that goes. So um, that's me signing out for now. Thank you very much. And before I go... <laughs> well, until next time, guys, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.